Hi there, it's me, Gamer Tower. I'm recapping Adventure Time Season 4, Episode 1 through 26 from Cartoon Network. Please support me on my Patreon page, Amateur Cartoons, at, at just $1 a month for a chance at a $10 Amazon gift card. This video is sponsored by my merch store, my Patreon page, Amateur Cartoons, my PayPal donations, my gifting site, Throne, and my partnership with W Energy Drinks. More about them later. Episode what hot to the touch. The, the show begins with the closing sequence from Inquid Inquidium. Flynn Princess slaps Finn's face and tells him to never mess with her again. We even Finn to say, dude, I think I have a crush. Jake then explains that he was trying to help Finn get over PB, saying sad times, and that she, she is evil. Finn becomes furious with Jake for saying that she was evil. Comes that he peeped beyond her burning gaze and that she is not evil, just passionate. Finn convinces Jake to help him look for her. Jake begins to walk over the for over the forest with Finn on his head, trying to convince him to date another princess and to just Wildberry as an option. Suddenly, a brown brown bird set on fire by the by FP flies over them and directs Finn and Jake to the location of FP. Jake shrinks down and he and Finn start to spy on Flame FP. They view FP playing with the burning sunflowers. Finn says that she looks like the steam of a puppy's nose searching for, for a ham in the snow. Jake tells him to snap out of it and that she is burning cute flowers. Days, Finn responds, yeah, she is like a cute flower. The conversation stops abruptly when FP hurts herself by putting her hand in a pond. Finn blows his cover to see if FP is alright and explains how he feels, causing her to glow brighter in excitement. Finn is scared off by off the fire that Flame FP produced, and he puts it out, feeling that destroying fire that FP creates can cause her physical harm. Finn alarmed, he asks, "Is he hurting her?" "Yet, yeah. yes," she replies. "That's all you've done." She gasps, asking if Finn is following her because he's trying to hurt her. Finn states to answer, starts to answer. "I guess I'm technically following you." Upset, FP runs away. While FP chases and calls after her, I mean Finn chases after her and after her and calls her after her. Jay chases after Finn and the prin and the princess before she burns down a tree to get away. After Jake puts out the fire, Finn shouts to FP, "Wait, I want to chat it up with you." She she then appears and says she is ambushing them, and starts shooting fireballs at them. The attack does not last long as FP confuses as Finn confuses FP by complimenting her while she is attacking. She asks Finn why is is he tormenting her? He responds, I'm not trying to. I just like you. I think. I think I like like you. Listen, when I look at you, my brain goes all stupid and I just wanna hug you. And sit on the couch and play Bemo with you. I can't explain why, but I've never felt this way, and I think we should be together. This causes her to blush, and her flames grow, glow, grow. Finn excitedly jumps up and down, clapping, but FP resists, explaining that all Finn has done to her, and that she, and that she thinks that Finn is trying to impede her in order to take revenge. FP threatens to transform the transform the Goblin Kingdom to her very own personal fire kingdom. She sets the entire field ablaze. Finn tries to convince her to stop before he and Jake are restrained by a wall of fire. Jake tells Finn to to fight back, but he refuses because he is still into her. Jake asks which is more important, being with her or being a hero and saving poor innocent goblin folks. Finn has no choice but to, to be a hero, and Jake informs 
informs Finn of his plan to build fireproof suits. Finn and Jake return to their treehouse and go into the garage in an attempt to find some new materials to build their suits. Instead, they find Neptor, who is playing hide-and-seek and claims to have been hiding for over 15 months, four days and nine hours. He hasn't been seen since Season 1, Episode episode 15. Watch my recap of Season 1, available now. Neptor then helps build fireproof suits for Finn and Jake to wear while Neptor says, Working for the Master. The, su- the suits are huge mater- metal robotic-like shells equipped with rockets and f- foam blasters. With Neptor himself acting as the helmet of Finn's suit, they all fly to the Goblin Kingdom where they as- try and reason with FP, but she continues her rampage. She tries to attack Finn and Jake, but it, it does not work because the suits are fireproof. When f- when Flame Princess attempts to shoot another fireball at uh, Finn, it is deflected into a goblin cart. The goblin claims to have been born in that cart. Jake then attempts to put out the, some of the fires, entering FP in the process. Neptor attempts to put out FP by hitting her with the foam blaster, but Finn manages to stop Neptor from directly hitting FP instead of the, the foam blast Jake. In exchange anguishes a few of the flame a few of FP's flames. Furious FP proclaims that that is the last time you hurt me. She grows into her beast form and continues a rampage through the goblin kingdom. A tear from F F FP right eye reveals that she has been harmed both physically and emotionally. Finn then rips himself out of his own suit and never never again wanting to see her hurt and stands on top of of it to shout to FP. She ignores him, causing Finn to say that he failed everyone despite Neptor's insistence that FP, that Finn hasn't failed him. Finn gives up, feeling he can never win the heart of anyone. He begins to couching and passes out from the smoke. He starts to cry in his sleep and some of the tears fall on the, fl- on the flames of FP, which not only hurt her, but also catches her attention. FP comes over and watches Finn cry for a short time before stopping all her flames from destroying the city. Finn coughs, regaining consciousness, and is surprised to see FP watching him. FP says she thinks she understands now that and believes that Finn is a water elemental because he creates water. Tears. Finn tries to explain that he is not, but FP, having trouble understanding the concept of his species, says, even if, even if we like each other, we are only going to hurt each other. Finn replies, no, we don't have to. I can take it. I mean, can we try? She replies, you would defy nature for me? Finn says, yeah, whatever. Whatevs. Flame FP hugs Finn, burning him and causing him to, up t- to tear up. Again, FP says goodbye, weaving in the trail of, f- of flames toward what seems to be a desert or s- sunrise. Jake goes to Finn and tells him that all the goblins are barbecued before revealing that he was just messing with him and that he saved all the goblins. Jake asks how things went with FP. She hugged me, replies Finn, then left. Whoa, says Jake. How did it feel? Finn ends episode with the line, it hurt. Episode 2, Five Short Grables. It starts It starts out with a strange man named Cuber who greets the audience. He, he wants the audience to guess the theme in a, a series of five shorts from the days of old. As they all c- connected in some way. He then takes out his hollow pyramid, which has a picture of Finn, Jake, Bimo, PB, Ice King, and LSP. The short begins. The sh- I mean, the shorts begin. Light, st- light sight. Starring Bimo. Finn and Jake leave Bimo alone 
in the tree tree fort. They say that they are going to the grocery kingdom and will be back in a in an hour. Bimo then runs to the tree fort bathroom, walks the door and asks of himself itself, Finn, Jake, to make no sure no one is watching. Once once alone, Bimo talks to to its reflection in a mirror. Bimo pretends to have an imaginary friend named Football and pretends to impress the friend the friend by showing it it that it is a real living boy. Football is impressed by all the things Bimo is ac- accomplished like brushing his te- its teeth, cleaning itself of soap and peeing through through although Bimo only pretends to do these things and does a poor job doing it. The camera then zooms out to show that Finn and Jake have been watching Bimo the whole time. Finn com- comments about Bimo's strange action. When they are are gone, they then check it off, prove that Bimo does weird things. They're drunk when nobody is walking around as their list of things to do. Touch, starring Finn and Jake. For company, accomplishing this, they try to high five each other, but fell miserably, missing the first time, and hardly hitting the second t- and third time. They are disappointed by their performance and they attempt to high five again, but this time with a running start. They succeed, but they feel they can do better, and back up even further for an even greater high five. After accompanying this achievement, Finn says he, he knows how he and, J- he and Jake can do the most ultimate high five ever. And Jake says, you've gotten crazy mad with power, lust, and I'm loving it. There is a scene ch- change and Finn is seen in a catapult taking, talking through a walkie-talkie to Jake who is in the desert Desert, desert of doom, using an unknown skeleton, and his get spiritual powers to catapult himself. Finn then explains, "Super ultimate high five, go!" And they thrust towards each other. The scene changes, and the gob- the grables, grable smell and taste are shown. Afterwards, in a short, in a both shorts, Finn and Jake are seen flying past high, high at high speeds. Finn and Jake. Both re- reappear in the fifth short story, Sound. Taste, starring PB. PB is, is shown working hard to create a sandwich for cinnamon bun. She makes the, che- the cheese by spinning a cow around and on a centrifuge. She then creates the lettuce by growing and shrinking a small piece of lettuce to the perfect size with chemicals. The tomato is made by Combining a joy fish with a balloon in a transportation machine, she chants old spells to make the loaf of bread. After doing all 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 this, she cuts up the ingredients and combines them to in a unique way into what she presents to Cinnabon as the, the most ultimate sandwich that will ever exist and ever will exist. To her honor, Cinnabon places it the stomach directly in his stomach. Without tasting it, he then regurgitates most of it in onto her face, and the four, and the four. Cinnabon then thanks PB for the sandwich behind behind a window. Finn is seen flying through the air, screaming at at the at the as the scene ends. Smell starting Ice King. In the next scene, the Ice King searches through his fortress for the source of a stench. He finds Gunther. And accuses him of bo- blowing up up the place with his nasty tooty booty. The Ice King tells the penguin not to worry because he will solve the problem. He he then places Gunther on a sheet of ice and sends it to the sea, claiming that he will never succeed in a, 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 a acquiring a, a princess so long as Gunther is stinking up the place. However, upon returning to his cave, the Ice King discovers that. That it is still smell smells. We've gone through out of the picture. The ice king quickly realizes his armpits are the source of the terrible stench. The scene then cuts to p- the penguin, to a penguin turning the shower knob, and we see the ice king standing in the shower with his arms raised, and the penguin standing 
from each both fiercely scrubbing his armpits as he orders them to scrub harder. After the shower, the ice king dis discards the penguins that were washing him in a pile of garbage by the trash cans in front of the fortress. He then turns to the Gunther who had find, find, to find he return he turn the oh wait, he then turns to find Gunther has returned and he is soaking wet. The Ice King cheerfully tells Gunther of his discovery that his armpits were the source of the stench, and then he apologizes as he carries the penguin inside. The Ice King observes aloud that he has no idea how his armpits got so stinky. Moe after which Gunther squeezes an under Ice King armpit and farts without the Ice King even noticing, throwing Gunther to be the true source of the smell after all. After this happens, Jake flies by the window and then the scene changes. Sound and touch final, starring LSP. The final scene opens at the Candy Kingdom talent show with Peppermint Butler as this MC on stage. Mark attempts to, to make a basket, but makes two out of ten. Backstage, LSP brags that her redemption of these lumps will ensure her victory. She proceeds to sing the song to those backstage. As she begins to rush to the stage permit, Butler informs her that she is not next, that a group of candy people go on. And to LSP's horror, they perform this, her song, These Lumps. After they finish, a distraught LSP goes on stage and mumbles the words to these lumps. The crowd accuses her of stealing the previous act. In anger, she throws a basket at the, audi at the audience member. The ball ricochets off of the audience member and makes a basket. She re repeats this twice. The audience loves it and names LSP the winner. So we Finn and Jake attempt complete their, fin their final high five over the stage, causing a sonic boom and falling to the ground after a thud. The audience is even more impressed with and Peppermint, Peppermint Butler names Finn and Jake the talent show winners, making LSP upset. At the end of at the end, Cooper asks the viewer learned the the learned the theme of the audience stories and tells viewers to pause the show to think about it while he makes a snappy pose. He then reveals to those who who could not figure it out that the theme was the five senses. Before ending the show, episode three, Web Weirdos. Finn and Jake are walking on a trail in the woods when suddenly Jake decides to perform a series of acrobatic moves. Finn, amazed by the stunts, attempts to do the same on his own, but they are less spectacular than Jake's. Finn and Finn, when Finn meets up with Jake, he claims he found a vertical trampoline. But Finn points out that that is actually a spider spider web. He, he attempts a stunt. Jake at Jake out of the web. They stunt Jake out of the web, but he gets caught himself. The two discuss ways to escape. Finn says using his nails, but they had they had been cut earlier. They had been cut over here. Where am I at? Okay, Finn just using his nails. They had been cut earlier, as shown in a flashback. Jake decides he is going to take a nap and wait for Finn's nails to grow. Two flies caught in the same web went warn Finn of their impending death. The owners of the web, two large spiders named Ed and Barb, return, arguing amongst themselves. They noticed Finn and Jake trapped in the web. And the argument is, escapes rapidly when Ed c complains that due to Barb's difficulty spinning webs, he has to do, do all the work. Barb gets upset and runs away. When Ed insults her web spinning skills and her uh, embarrassment by at spinning in front of him, Ed then proceeds to spin webbing, putting Jake inside a web cocoon, saving him for later. The process is which which grosses out Finn 
Ed Rose is that he his way of approaching conflict is ru- ruining his marriage. Finn tries to offer marriage advice, but Ed is skeptical because he assumes that Finn is only doing it to try and escape. As Jake as Jake and w- wakes up, Ed grabs a fly fly to eat. The terrified fly explains, "Oh glob, it's all over," which it, it permits Finn to stop Ed and try to save the fly. Finn tells Ed that he will eat the fly to prove that he is not si- not simply trying to escape. The fly protests until Finn whispers into into his its ear that he is only going to pretend to eat him. He pretends to chew the fly, who proceeds to fake screams of horror, I mean of terror, and Ed is convinced. Ed asks Finn for some advice, and Jake suggests he gets his wife to, a gift to apologize. Ed agrees and walks into the forest in an attempt to find a good gift for his wife. With, with Ed gone, Finn then splits out the fly, hiding in his mouth. The fly tries to escape, but immediately falls back into the web and gets stuck again. Finn then tells Jake that he is he's a he has he has a dumb idea, an escape plan. Ed still searching in the forest, complains aloud himself about how his his friends already have kids and his wife treats him like a dingus. He then comes across a a glowing sword in the hands of a dead knight, which he thinks will be a a perfect gift. So he takes the sword and runs back to the web, showing it to his wife. Finn's dumb idea is real to be attempting to shoot down a, a bird with his spit and uses the fallen bird's beak as a cutting tool. He finally hits one of the cat and, and, and he catches it. The camera zooms out to reveal he has missed the catch many times before he actually caught the bird. Spit covered birds littered the ground around the web. He begins to use the beak of the bird to cut the web when Barb comes back and notices that they them trying to escape. Ed returns with the sword and presents it to his wife. But Barb dislikes the sword and assumes that Ed has got the gift for himself. Further inc- increasing the tension in their relationship, Ed cuts the web, releasing the food he caught in, in spite of Barb, who said she did not need it. Ed claims Barb is dependent on his on him for food, and she can't spin her own web due to some unknown defunction. Barb attacks him in order to in anger, telling Ed that she will eat him instead. Finn escapes the scene with Jake but goes back to help Ed he even though Jake says Finn should mind his own business. Finn distracts Barb from Ed and ends up battling her alone. Enraged by the interference, Barb conventionally pins Finn to a wall, opening her jaw wide, and Ed is about to eat him. Jake comes back comes and asks Finn what's going on. Barb begins to try and spin a web, but strains and begins to to moan in pain, confused and worried. Ed asks if she is okay. Instead of silk, she ejects a giant egg sack. Her inability to spin webs was due to her being pregnant. The sack bursts and millions of baby spiders rain down from the exploded egg sack. Overjoyed, Barb says that they can make a new start and kisses Ed, recoiling with the two spiders in love. Finn and Jake get buried in baby spiders, and Jake dismisses it as just a part of the circle of life. However, for Finn, and who was grossed out, screamed and, t- and tried to escape from the pool of baby spiders. Episode 4, Dream of Love. Finn and Jake are, are having fun rolling down a hill. They laugh happily as they reach the bottom. Finn tells Jake about all about all the things they plan to do, which are getting an apple pie from Tree Trunks and listening to PB's concert. They run, they run to Tree Trunks' house to eat apple pie. When they arrive, they find Tree Trunks in the rose garden in front of her house. They start talking with Tree Trunks when Mr. Pig who was last seen in Apple Thief, unexpectedly pops up and explains that he never left after the event in 
the episode, Apple Thief. After awkwardly talking about tree trunks, Mr. Pig admits his love for tree trunks to, to Finn and Jake. But then quickly gets embarrassed about it. Finn convinces Mr. Pig to confess his feelings to her. Mr. Pig feels, then gives dramatic love speech af- after T.T. walks away, walks outside of the house. T.T. responds by claiming she feels the same way. They then hug each other. Finn, Jake, and then ask Tree Trunks if they, she would make an apple pie for PB's concert. The scene then shifts to PB, PB's concert where, where she is playing an electronic piano. During the concert, she impersonally paces on the stand while waiting for TT to bring the apple pie that she promised to bake. However, when TT and Mr. Pig finally arrive, she she reveals that she was too distracted by Mr. Pig to make any pies. This is this in turn upsets Jake. TT then starts to kiss Mr. Pig and all the spectators at the concert are disgusted by by their public display of affection. PB also becomes upset at their display and claims she can't play the with them being gross. To prevent the concert from ending, Fence puts the two apart, but they slowly move closer to each other. As the music continues and and start and start kissing again, this enrages PB and most of the spectators. So PB tells Cinnamon Bun to stop them from kissing, but instead he he just stops the concert and tells everyone to leave, causing PB to pack her of Trumpino and left. Finn then makes the two lovers promise to keep their love hidden, and they agree. The scene then shifts to a, a marriage. Um, montage of various failed attempts of Mr. Pig and T.T. trying to hide their affection for one another. They attempt to hide in places such as under Finn and Jake's tree fort, inside a baby crib, inside a book at the library, and inside Finn's sandwich. After finding the two lovers in his sandwich, Finn continues to explain why they can't be together and tells them to try harder in being more secretive. The scene then shifts to a Drive in movie. The movie goes smoothly until Tree Trunks and Mr. Pig cast a huge silhouette of them tongue kissing each other. Everyone views this boy becomes disgusted and angry. Fed up with their constant affection, Finn decides their relationship has to stop right then and there. He splits them apart and so just multiple options to them. But they keep coming up with excuses to his suggestions, such as not wanting to hide their affection, being affectionate inside Tree Trunks' house, or rushing into marriage. Finn and Jake rejects the term, this ter- this terms, and then decide to physically split them up, much to the, the much to the delight of the other people in the drive-through, that result resulting in them to cheer for their breakup. Mr. Pig and Jake end up in the old tavern in the Candy Kingdom. Mr. Pig explains to Jake that he does not know what to do with his life without tree trunks. Jake asks him about where he lives, and Pig explains that he is homeless. At the same time, Finn and Finn and T.T. are at tree, tree trunks' house. Finches this that Tree Trunks should make a pie to get her mind off Pig. T.T. And, and, and Pig then begin to sing the song Dream of Love, which is about their love for each other. After the song, Jake, Jake and Finn, who become emotional as, as a result of listening to their song, tell Pig and T.T. respectively to go find each other because they love they love each other. They run towards each other and embrace with a dramatic kiss near the Candy Kingdom Tavern. The episode ends with various specters becoming disgusted with their first play of affection. Finn holding an apple pie comments about how T.T. and Pig Richard is nice. Jake sees the apple pie tree trunks made and takes takes it from Finn's hand. Jake becomes excited and said, Apple pie, I've been waiting to kiss you all day. 
Jake then kisses it, getting apple pie all over his face. Episode 5, Return to the Nidospear. The episode begins with Finn and Jake waking up in a pile of bananas in a cell, jail cell with their memories of how they arrived there completely erased. The jail guard becomes comes and tells the two that they're in the Nidospear. After asking how they can get home, he explains that you they can't unless Hudson Abadir allows them. Finn and Jake, along with other demons are then set free because they can't leave the Nidospear anyway. They climb up through a hole and look, look around to get a good view of the Nidospear. Afterwards, Finn and Jake ask for help from a half-monster demon who tells them to climb into him and he will carry them to the tower. As they drop off at, at, uh, at a river full of demons, a traveler explains to them that they have to wait in line. They spend almost 28 days waiting in line for their turn to see the tower. Through the time of elapse, it could have just been a joke. When it is finally their turn, they they have all stand in a, another long line in a moment. A storm of cloud appears in the mist and states, starts killing off all the demons that were there to ask Hudson Abadir questions. So Jake and Finn hide behind a rock. They barely escape. And follow the cloud to the castle, to its castle. There, they fight. They fight their way back to the portal in order to get home. They get into the portal, and Hudson Abadir follows them. Finn fights him and cuts his head with his d- demon sword, which reveals that the ruler was really Marceline all along. When they go back to Ooh, Marceline closes the Nidal Spiral portal and tells them never to come back. Finn claims they must go to discover the truth. Episode 6, Daddy's Little Monster. The episode begins where part 1 left. Left off with Bimo charging Jake's phone. Jake is we- wearing a green towel and a blue shower cap. Presumably having just had the shower referred to at the end of the previous episode. The phone has finally charged and Finn and Jake proceed to watch videos of their time in the Nido Spear. There, there are three videos of, on the phone. The first one shows Finn and Jake fooling around with the camera before entering the Nidospear to hang out with Marceline at her at her offer to come with her. The sword, I mean, the second video shows a scene in which Marceline's dad flies in a burnt weed to tell Marceline that he wishes for her to take over the family business and roll the Nidospear. He ca- casually takes off and gives her a purple amulet that he says can grant wishes. Marceline refuses to take over her dad's job and plays a short song after he leaves. Marceline plays the banjo and sings, and Finn plays a trampoline. Through the though she claims that she has her own plans for life, she tries on the amulet and accidentally turns herself into an evil monster like her dad. The video breaks out as a as a third video comes on, showing that Finn and Jake get thrown in their jail cell by the Nidospear jailer, who spews bananas previously from each of his ears in a way that suggests that bananas are a equivalent of fences of vomit to demons. Jake and Finn make gross out faces for each other, and Jake drops the banana he had been carrying. There, they decide to turn. I mean, return to the Nidospear to save her. After discussing them, this disguising themselves as demons, Finn, Finn using a, a cut out, cut up paper plate and pajamas, and Jake using his touching powers to alter his appearance, and and take the form of a gross shaped toothed, toothed demon. They go back. Back into the small the spell that Finn used to open a portal to the Nidospear, and it came from the Nidospear. When he they re-enter, they find themselves trapped in yet another line, but one which they believe leads to Hudson Abadir, who is playing cruel tricks on the demons of the Nidospear. They are discovered by the giant overruling demon when they try to cut it in line and barely escape after it attempts to eat them. They run into the into 
into her house and find the the Lord of Evil, the actual Hudson Abadir making a sandwich. He does a lot. He explains to them that he only wanted Marceline to follow in his footsteps. That he thinks it is a great, great that she has been possessed by the amulet. Hearing this, Finn gets in, angered, slapping the the Lord of Evil's sandwich out of his hands, and goes back to rescue Marceline. Finn and, Finn and Jay decide they need a, a way to get close to Marceline and start a portal rap. I mean, a political rap. Soon after hearing their song, they're other demons join through them in the revolution to overthrow Marceline. The rich Marceline finally managed to take off the amulet that has controlling her. However, Jake is unable to go go back to the portal they created before before as the demons try to eat his legs, dismantling him. So Finn puts on the amulet and throws Jake and Marceline out of the Night of Speeder. Unfortunately, under the control of the amulet, he tries to get Jacob Marceline back to the night of as he says has become evil. But the word of evil rips the amulet off Finn and puts it back on, explaining to Marceline that he is proud of her no matter what she does, and and that he actually likes her friends, Finn and Jake. Marceline closes the night of portal and after sta- sta- stating her surprise at her dad for liking Finn and Jake, she jokingly says she does not want to hang out with, with them anymore. The episode ends with Marceline asking Finn if he is okay. Finn is exhausted and traumatized after having been under the, the, the control of the amulet and does not answer. Episode 10, Goliad. While Finn and Jake are doing activities near the Candy Kingdom, Pepper and Butmer informs them PB wants to see them. The princess explains that after her brush with death at the hands of the witch, she realized she can't live forever. So she used science and some of her DNA to create an, a hair that could live forever. The The hair is, is Goliad, a pink sphinx with a, with a mound of her f- forehead and the voice of a young British child. Finn and Jake introduce themselves to Goliath, who takes a liking to them. After PB pl- plucks one of Finn's hairs, she notices that she is extremely exhausted. She explains that she, she has been awake for 83 hours straight, teaching Goliath about being a good ruler. Finn and Jake vo- volunteer to look after Goliath. While the princess rests, and she agrees, the two friends take the the curious Sphinx to the to to a preschool, where Finn builds an obstacle course. Jake introduces her to the other children, but she but is dismayed to find that they are, are extremely unruly and poorly behaved. Jake is forced to yell at the children to make them stop assaulting him. Later, Goliath imitates Jake's harsh discipline, going as a children in an attempt at being a leader. Finn re- re- rebukes Goliath and shows us that she used her brain to lead instead of force. Goliath reveals that her mound concealed a third eye and proceeds to fi- psycho- psycho- um, physically control Finn and her- the objects in the course for a perfect completion. She explains that with her in control, everything would be perfect. Worried about Goya's behavior, Finn and Jake take her to the princess for help. PB tries to teach Goya that compromise is the best way to rule, citing how a bee and a flower help each other. Goya counters by explaining that the bee does not care if the flower, if, if it hurts or kills the flower because the flower is weaker Goliath states that she is the strongest, so she is in control. PB thinks to herself that her creation has been corrupted and would need to be dismantled and started from scratch. And started from scratch, but Goliath reveals that she can read minds and begins to destroy the castle. PB tells Finn and Jake that Goliath is too powerful to be to be defeated by them. She introduces them to to dis- distract Goliath long enough to create another candy sphinx to fight fight back. And they they need to think 
about the plan to to they oh wait sorry they and they need to not think of the plan or Golia will find out. Fanjay confronts Golia, but but are beaten by her physic phys- psychic powers. Golia tries to read Finn's mind, and Finn narrowly avoids revealing the plan by interrupting his memories with nonsense. The new cre- creature, another sphinx with an, with an eagle's head, white feathers, and golden hair, re- rescues Finn and, Finn, and Finn and battles Goliad. Goliad tries to convince her brother named Stormo that they should work together, but Stormo refuses by screeching. They engage in a psychic showdown, but with their powers matched, the two creatures are internally walked in a mental state stalemate. Pabby tells Finn that Stormo was created using DNA from the hair she took earlier, and thus, in- thus inherited Finn's heroic qualities. That was why he saved Finn instead of controlling them, and why he sacrificed his son to keep Goliath in check for all eternity. Finn realizes that Stormo is like his son, was like a son to him, and wishes him a happy birthday. Episode 11, Beyond This Earthly Realm. The episode opens with Finn and Jake des- descending down a dark mineshaft like tunnel lined with boulders. With the, with the help of Jake's stretchy powers, he has wrapped one arm around a rock outside the cave entrance and is lowering himself down along with Finn. They both wear lights on some some sort of on their Heads, Jake, Jake, a candle stuck on top of a calendar he wears as as a hat, and and Finn, and Finn, a flashlight tra- taped to a helmet. Jake is tired and wants to go home, but Finn still wants to search for a mystery cave. They fall on top of of each other when they reach the bottom of the shaft, but Finn quickly notices a small opening. They both crawl out into a much larger chamber containing a, a porcelain lamb with a red crystal embedded in, in its forehead resting on a stone altar surrounded by three sides by st- stairs. Fred walks up the lamb and reach, reaches to touch it, looking fascinated, but from behind, Jake stops him and says, it might it might have a, a sacred significance Finn ignores him, saying he wants it for his sacred bathroom. When he reaches forward to touch the lamb, a bright reddish-pink light bursts from the lamb's crystal, and when the light shrinks and retracts back into the lamb, Finn is nowhere to be seen. Jake runs up to the lamb and finds that the lamb now has Finn's sleeping face, and the red gem has disappeared. Jake explains Finn's become one with the lamb. Meanwhile, Finn picks himself up off the ground in the same room not far from the altar. But the cavern has taken on a red glow, and he is suddenly surrounded by many strange, semi-transparent creatures. He yells to Jake when he sees him at the altar, but his friend can't hear or see him and does not turn around. Jake sadly, sadly wraps up the porcelain lamb and carefully, carefully in a cloth, vowing that he that they will get through this. And seeing, and seeing, seeing. I mean, seeming to think Finn is inside the lamb, he sits on the floor, holding the lamb and yanks his tail twice before it starts. Grow, glowing, growing shorter, dragging him back towards the mine shaft. Finn follows him along unseen and unheard. In the tree fort, Finn, and, Finn and, J- and Jake sit on the couch across from Bimo, but Finn is invisible to, to the other two, along with the strange creature just everywhere. Jake is pondering how to free Finn. Bimo begins to make electronic farting noises, saying Finn always likes it when, when Bimo did that. Finn laughs, Though the the others can't see him, see this, this gives Jake the idea of doing all Finn's favorite activities to get him out of the lamb. He tells Bimo to play Finn's favorite song, which turns 
out to be a childish song he liked when he was two years old. The creatures surrounding him laugh when they hear the song, and Finn walks out of the house through the wall when he finds he can't touch Bimo to stop him from the song embarrassing him. Sitting on the branch on the tree fort hopelessly, Finn watches Ice King chase just what the old wizard thinks is Leaf Princess. Ice King grabs the leaf and falls on the grass, and Finn says, It's just a dumb old leaf, you dumb old Ice King. Finn is surprised when the Ice King responds, I know, but it's mine. And he asks how he can see him when nobody else can. The Ice King tells him he is trapped in the spirit realm. He can see him because of his wizard eyes. The Ice King offers to help him because he is his friend. And they go to the Ice Kingdom together. Ice King shows Finn all the weird creatures that go about his helm. And when Finn asks where they go, where they come from, Ice King replies, all over the universe. Ice King says he can't touch or kill them, and he hates them. He tells Finn that putting all the creatures into a spirit hole in his basement is the only way to get out of the spirit world. Finn ob 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 oh, sorry, oblige and begins throwing and kicking creatures into the hole, which seems like it is filled with, with liquid. Back in the tree fort, Jake is trying to coax Finn out of the lamb by playing Compy's Castle, a video game of BMOs. With it, despite his hopeful, positive attitude, Jake is still unsuccessful. In Ice King's basement, Finn is plunged, plunging up the spirit hole because he has put all the creatures he can find into it. However, Ice King says he hasn't gotten all of them and shows him an eyeball creature in his bathroom that he finds particularly creepy because it always stares at him. Finn catches it and puts it in, in the hole. But Ice King says there there's one last creature and it's pretty much the worst because it always leaves its gross heads laying around. He calls the last creature the dead one. Suddenly Ice King is chased around by one of the heads and screams hysterically at Finn to get rid of the last creature. Finn finds the creature and chases it with more difficulty than the, than the other creatures gave him, and nearly falls into the spirit hole. When he manages to get 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 it in, he finds that inter, inter, instantly the spirit hole leads downward into the cavern where he he found the lamb earlier on. Earlier on, when he f climbs out and plugs the hole. For the last time, he searches for the Ice King and finds him jawfully bouncing on his bed and singing that Finn will be trapped in the spirit world forever. This his one and only friend. Enraged, Finn threatens to re reopen the spirit hole when Ice King reveals that he tricked him, but he, Ice King hurriedly changes his plan and promises to help him break the the porcelain lamb, setting him, setting him free. Ice King returns to the tree, tree house, wearing a layer of ice ice as armor, and Jake, who was still playing games, sets up and defends the lamb from the Ice King, who says he has has to smash it because Finn is inside it. Jake quickly shatters Ice King's armor in two punches, puts, puts off his robe, embracing the wizard, embarrassing the wizard, and causing him to trip onto onto the lamb. Ice King's face now appears on the on the back of the lamb's head, trapped in the spirit world with Finn, and able to actually touch actually actually I mean actually and able to be actually touched by the gross creatures. Ice King has has a fit, take, take, takes Finn's hat and wears it like a shirt and and ends up wailing on the floor again, wa waving his arms back and forth. Finn notices that Ice King Ice King's hand movements are affecting the static on the television screen. It passes by and realizes that they can su settle effects on the mental material plane. Finn and Ice King work together, levitating the leaves and scraps into from the floor. And throwing them around in the in air currents. 
shift the lamb off the stool it rests on, shattering it on the floor. Finn and, Finn, Finn and Ice King immediately pop back into the material plane as the lamb breaks and the leaves fall to the floor. Jake wraps it wraps in a hug. Jake says, That was beautiful. Then sweeps up the pieces of the lamb, saying they should flush it flush it in the sacred bathroom. They both laugh, but Ice King grabs them and gives them both an un- unwanted hug, crackling hysterically. Episode Episode 12. Gotcha. The story starts off with Finn, Jake, and Bimo playing Boca Ball Turtle Princess. Boca Ball. Turtle Princess flies on the on the hovercraft to meet Lumpy Lump, LSP at her home in the woods. She finds Lumpy, Lumpy Sp- LSP fending off boys in the case ants and fleas and thinks she is an attractive attractive because of her lumps. In order to help TP with her boy boy problems, LSP vows to write a book to teach her to attract boys with her turtle lumps. Some of the some of the bokeh ball lands near the princesses and upon seeing Finn, Jake, and Bimo with, 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 with and with Turtle Princess's suggestion, LSP decides to write her book about Finn. She she then improvises impro, 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 a dress out of plastic a plastic bag from Squeezy Mart and leaves for the tree fort. For a note, Jake and Bimo were bet, betting on the winner for the game of Book of Ball. Since Bimo won, Jake has to call Bimo Sensei for a month. Upon arriving at the tree fort, well, LSP uses a fruit pie as makeshift lipstick when, before knocking on the door. Jake, disg- disgusted, tries to get rid of LSP, but she insists she is there for Finn and Jake's adventures secretary job opening and produces a handmade sign as proof. Finn and Jake never made a sign, but they could not stand to disappoint LSP, so the duo reluctantly accept her offer, and she proceeds to to command commandeer a table as her desk. LSP asks for food, and Finn, Finn looks around for some unsatisfied with the opinion options she tries to seduce him to to in order to make him look more look more upon success in the form of finn happening upon some leftover spaghetti she says gotcha turtle princess calls lsp's phone to ask for an update the next day lsp finds finn putting rocks in in jake and jake who is shaped like a like a box? Finn and Jake explain they are taking the rocks on an adventure. Alice Pete insists upon helping them carry some of the rocks. However, though, the trip she gets too tired to carry the rock, the rocks, and she, after dropping them, answers in their call from Turtle Princess. After hanging up, the trio reach the top of the mountain. They are climbing. Finn begins to throw the rocks into the watch of phantoms explains that that pb told them to use the rocks to find a safe path across lsp then tries to seduce finn by making her dress um, strap fall off but it has no effect as he is too focused on finding the path after finding the path demonstrated by the stones that did not sink to the bottom. They they cross the 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 walk, and go into the cave across the, the way. Inside the cave, they encounter a portal. Finn and Jake are f- focused on the portal, but LSP still tries to seduce the guys by t- taking off her dress. When when this fails, she runs into the portal and becomes trapped on the f- on the other side in a chamber full of mirrors. In the chamber, LSP. 
watches as the mirrors fill with images of Finn. The mirror the mirror fins take off their shirts and hats, revealing hair revealing hair down to the to their waist. The mirror fin begins to come out of the mirror, but their bodies are solid a solid block black. LSP panics because she thinks her powerful lumps have turned Finn into a monster. Finn and Jake then bust through the and defeat the mirror fins. After finishing them off, LSP buzz that they came because of her beautiful lumps. But Finn insists that what really matters is what is on the inside, like your brains and stuff. They explain to LSP that PB sent them there to destroy the magic mirrors. Later, as the trio are in the tree fort, LSP notices Finn sitting sitting alone outside. She asks, she asks Jake what he is doing out there. He tells her that Finn likes to go out outside and think. Sometimes after an adventure, LSP then understands about the lumps on the inside and Rose that Rose Finn is 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 the beautiful one with his inside lumps. Also, it appears that LSP may have a crush on Finn, shown by a montage of Finn's interactions with LSP throughout the day. Inspired, she calls. T- Turtle Princess to tell her that her book will be a uh, will be will be finished soon. A montage plays where LSP writes her book. When when finished, she presents the manuscript to Turtle Princess, though not what she expected. Turtle Princess loves it, and decides to pu- publish and entitle it. I wrote a book. LSP returns to the tree fort wearing a brown bat paper bag and reveals to Finn. And Jake that she has been there only to do research for her book, yelling that Finn is hot. Alice P flies towards the window in a rush, and Jake yells after Alice P. Alice P, you're you're wearing you're wearing garbage for clothes, while floating out the window backwards. Lumpy space princess replies, "Gotcha." Once again, seeing the title of the episode. Episode 13, Princess Cookie. The story begins when Princess PB, Finn, and Jake are bar- barricaded behind Ben Eggards during a hostage crisis. PB attempts to negotiate with Cookie, with a cookie, the hostage t- taker, by offering him a large cowboy hat instead of her crown as ransom. He re- refuses to take the offer and adds that he will only give up the hostages for her royal crown. Bobblegum then proceeds to call the Captain Banana Guard, but Jake stops her and says that he and Finn could sneak in and help. Jake says he wants to be a mailman, and Finn replies that he could be his shadow. PB replies that, that Jake looks looks more like a milkman. <clears throat> Like a, like a milkman, and Jake really agrees. Jake and Finn then put on the costumes and go inside to take control. When the cookie asks who he is, Jake explains that he is he is the milkman tasked with Dover milk to all the hostages. The hostage taker with him in. Inside, Finn informs Jake of his plan. After Jake gives out bottles of milk, Finn tells him to yell out Alvin hot, Alvin's hot juice box. To confuse the hostage taker when throwing the milk at the cookie at the last hostage delivery. This plan was soon read in useless because the cookie has backups. His chocolate chips. Fenton then proceeds to the back room to dispose of the chocolate chips. While Jake asks the cookie what what is wrong. The cookie reveals that he lived at the candy orphanage where the orphans were always depressed. One day, PB came and cheered up the orphans when she asked Baby Snaps the name of the cookie. Said he was, he was referred as when he wants to be. He replied, I want to be a princess. He then revealed that he said that he could, could cheer up and help children. When PB heard this, she giggled, thinking the response was cute. Baby Snaps took it seriously as an insult.
The scene then flashes forward to the to, to the present. In an attempt to con- consult Baby Snaps, Jake tells Baby Snaps that PB did not wit him be a mailman, but instead made him into a milk milkman. Then the story flashes to the storeroom where a chocolate chip is seen turning out a children's nightlight. Finn is then seen ambushing the chocolate chip, screaming Alvin Alvin's hot juice box. Baby Snaps is then seen radioing the chocolate chips, but all of them are knocked unconscious as Finn took them all out. The cookie then throws the radio on the ground, crushing it and screaming, I'm out. I'm about to flip out, man, and take that crown. After seeing this, Jake replies that he does not have to be in the candy kingdom. He can leave and start a cookie kingdom and he be Princess Cookie. Baby Snaps is surprised by this and claims, I mean, calm and calms down. Jake then exits the market and asks Bubblegum for a horse. So Pete, so Princess Cookie could, can leave. Bubblegum replies no and says that he is a criminal and that must be put in jail for the rest of his life. After going back in, the scene then flashes to a later than Princess Cookie. I mean, flashes to waiter when Princess Cookie and Jake are seen outside with Bubblegum and a banana guard is on, in a horse costume. Jake yells that the horse is a trick, turns himself into a horse, and carries Princess Cookie away. They, they are then seen running through the ca- cotton candy field forest. Finn then re- re- appears, appears in Jake's shadow and asks him what, is, what he is doing. Jake replies that he is helping Princess Cookie achieve his dream. He then asks if he is he is with him or not, and Finn replies not. Jake then pushes him off of himself and dashes away from from him. Princess Cookie then tells Jake to stop, but Jake says, We're going to jump the candy gorge. Princess Cookie then forcefully stops Jake. After stopping him, Princess Cookie says he can't do this. The mana guards are soon are seen closing in. Princess Cookie then willingly falls into the gorge in an attempt to end his life. The mana guard the mana guard is is then seen taking pictures of Princess Cookie, who is very much alive but is smashed into many pieces. Princess Cookie then yells, I gubbed it up. I gubbed up. The scene then flashes to the Candy Kingdom Mental Hospital. Pete, Princess Cookie, and Can- Candy Pete person are t- playing chess. Jake then comes in saying there is a delivery from the Grass Kingdom, a crown. Princess Cookie takes it and puts it on his head, signaling his transformation into royalty. As Finn and Jake and Princess and PB watch on, the other people at the hospital then bow down to Princess Cookie and the episode ends. Now a word from my from our sponsors. My merch store. I offer shirts, mugs, hoodies, phone cases, and so much more. Support me. Me on my Patreon page. Anime cartoons starting at just one dollar a month. Get my weekly work schedule posted every Friday. My animated sneak peeks at upcoming animated videos. Plus get put into my contest to win ten dollar Amazon gift card. Must have five hundred supporters by November thirtieth, twenty twenty three for the contest. Thanks. Support support at forty dollars a month. Get Patreon exclusive merch. Do over to your home to your home. Send one item every three months. Four items altogether. Send me PayPal donations. As, send as much for as little as you'd like. Send me some gifts through the website Throne. If an item you think I will enjoy isn't available, send a request. I might add it. Now for my partnership with W Energy Drinks. Get 10% off your order using my code. Link below. Zero sugar, zero crash. Now back to the video. Episode 14, Card Wars. The episode starts out at... Tr- the tree fort with Finn eating sandwiches and drinking juice on, on the couch. Jake soon walks in with a box and size obnoxiously to get Finn's attention. Finn asks what is what is in the box. Jake, Jake eventually explains that the box contains the, the cards to play card wars. Jake explains that Lady Rainicorn does not 
want to play with him anymore because he always beats her. Finn tells Jake th- that he wants to play. They begin setting up a table with snacks as Bimo walks, in, walks by. Jake asks if Bimo wants to play way with them, but it obviously reply, but it obviously replies that it does not play such games with Jake. Struggling, sh- struggling. I mean, shrugging off Bimo's cryptic words, Finn and Jake decide to stake. The winner will be a cool guy, and that the loser will be a dweeb. Jake fills two cups with soda. But adds coffee grounds. Beet, beet, beetle butter, grape jelly, kimchi, and ham chunk juice, to one. Finn, Finn laments, laments the loss of personality. Good soda, but Jake quickly writes labels on the cups and explains that this is a part of the stakes. The winner will be the cool, the the normal. We'll get the normal cool guy cup, and the loser must drink the gross dweeb cup. After Finn agrees, Jake explains the rules of card wars, which takes two hours. Jake then sets up his kingdom and prepares to start the game. Noticing Finn has fallen asleep from the long-winded explanation of the rules, Finn, Finn says to, to, to start anyway, despite Jake's protests. The two begin playing. Both players... Foop their land cards, and Jake reminds Finn to keep his hand hidden to avoid giving his opponent a strategic advantage. He then begins his turn by ev- activating the Silo of Truth, which shows him all of the cards in Finn's hand. Jake mocks Finn's hand, but takes one of Finn's cards, Cerebral Bloodstorm, which magically flies into his hand, entering his battle phase. Jake proceeds to summon his Husker Knights for an attack on Finn's schoolhouse, backed by his stolen cerebral bloodstorm. When when promoted to defend, Finn asks if he can if his cool dog and ancient scholar can defend against the knights, which Jake laughs off his obviously impossible as impossible Obviously impossible. Finn then floops the pig. Jake scoffs at this, telling Finn that creatures must be activated to attack or defended, not flooped. However, Finn notes that the pig can be flooped, activating it, its effect, which, to Jake's horror, results in his in the pig marching into his kingdom and eating his cornfields. Since the Husker Knights are powered by cornfields, the pig eventually causes them to fall apart. Negating Jake's attack. Furthermore, Jake's several bloodstorm only destroys his own troops since Finn is not attacking. Jake is upset at Finn's prog- progress, but Finn explains that it is just logic that pigs eat corn. Un- unable to argue with the results, Jake grimly remo- announces the end of his turn. Finn seems uncertain how to proceed with the beginning of his turn. Jake tells him that he needs to discard a card from his hand and draw a new one. As Finn does so, Jake mocks him at a babe in the woods, warning that Finn's beginning luck ends this round. However, Finn surprises his friend by adding two new buildings to his kingdom, Spirit Tower and the Cave of Solitude. In his, in his own battle phase, Finn sends his pig to the Cave of Solitude for a nap and sends his interest caller to study in the schoolhouse. A bewildered Jake asks if Finn was planning to attack, but Finn explains that he will attack on another turn. As Finn turns, turn ends, Jake gleefully declares that fate, that fate has turned in his favor, declaring his intent to destroy Finn's pig and regain the advantage of his on his turn. He plays Field of Nightmares to summon the Legion of Eaterwings to scare Finn's Pig to death. Finn points out that they can't. They can't. Uh, they can't, as they are unable to enter the cave of solitude. Jake attempts to cast teleport to bring the pig out. Out, but Finn notes that teleport only works on on the caster's creatures. Jake admits that Finn is correct. Confident in his position, Finn taunts an incredibly frustrated Jake, declaring that he is the cool guy. The taunt, however, gives Jake an idea. He extremely floops his volcano, despite Finn's shocking protests. Although the result lava flew, 
annihilates most of Jake's own kingdom. A stray rock destroys Finn's cave, along with the pig inside it. How happy that he finally killed the pig. Jake plays Reclaim Landscape to restore his kingdom to its original state, how reviving his Husker Knights. In the process, next, Jake moves his useless Eastwood Swamp card to reveal the immortal Maze Walker underneath the powerful looking spirit creature that does not triple de- that does triple dominance if its controlled ha- controller has cornfields in their kingdom. With, with a triumphant scream of "I told you cornfields are awesome," Jake, Jake prepares to attack, only for Finn's ancient scholar to emerge from the de- un- undamaged schoolhouse. Finn explains that his scholar has been studying studying a Raise the Dead ability, which he uses to resurrect his pig. Jake looks on in frustration as Finn foops his pig once more, devastating Jake's knights by destroying his cornfields. Finn then notices that his spirit tower is doing a thingy, a thing, as it brings Jake's immortal maze walker over to Finn's side. Unks at the at the gawking in his of his maze walker. Agreed. Jake walks away from the table, grumbling to himself in, in frustration. A worried Finn suggests a break only for Jake to grow in a huge size and d- dangle Finn off his finger, ordering him to play the game. After rec- recalling Bimo's statement that it does not play ga- card wars with Jake, Finn says he needs to go to the bathroom or the boys' style room. So he can get away from the table and find Bimo. After dropping on Finn's head with with his, its Bimo, Bimo chop attack. Bimo explains that he, the last time he, it beat Jake in Card Wars, Jake did not talk to it for a month. Finn realizes that his well intended attempt to cheer Jake up is only making things worse, and Bimo suggests that he will have to take a take a dive. As Jake pulls Finn from all the way upstairs back to the table against demanding that he play the game, Finn declares internationally lost. He declares that he is about to use his ultimate attack to which Jake replies that he still ha- has his wandering bald man. However, instead of sending the mortal maze walker to finish the game, he chooses to send his pig into battle. The mo- The pig moves into muddy section of Jake's kingdom to attack his last creature, a wandering bald man, and a pathetic but suspenseful battle ensures. To both Finn and Jake's dismay, the pig wins the battle, and as scrawling, Jake prepares to admit defeat. However, as the pig begins to return to Finn's side, it gets stuck in the mud and falls under Jake's control. This causes Jake to rem- regain his excitement since pigs can't leave mud landscapes once they enter he gleefully declares the pig is mine he then plays another reclaim landscape card to restore his cornfields before summoning archer dan to destroy all of finn's buildings with corn tripled arrows for his final move jake summons a large reaper like creature that takes the control of all of finn's creatures jake triumphantly explains that he has won since finn has no creatures left finn concor- congratulates jake even as the dog rubs his face in the game board and the ha- and hands over the dweeb cup after taking a sip after i mean after taking a sip finn claims that it is good and asks if jake wants to try it and as a prize, Jacob oblige, obliges. He then immediately spits it out because it is, it is disgusting. And Finn directly calls him a dweeb. The scene then closes with the two of them still sipping the gross drink together while Bimo shakes its head at them in disappointment. Episode 15, Sons of Mars. The episode start with, starts with the magic man taunting the... St- the stag and this is star falling from from the sky he transforms the deer into a telescope to be able to see the star revealed it to be his older brother and sister glob glob grob gob glob grob grob intends to capture the magic man 
activates a device that drains the magic man's magic juice in an attempt to slow him down. As Finn and Jake walk beside a train track while carrying broken parts of a robot for an unknown reason, magic man swims into them, knocking them to the ground as Grob closes in. The magic man turns Jake into a duplicate of himself and disguises himself as Jake. Grob confronts Jake disguised as magic man and takes him to Mars. Finn is en- enraged at Magic Man for fr- framing Jake and t- demands that he should help him save Jake. Magic Man refuses to help him, explaining that his powers will remain in a d- drained state until Jake is executed on Mars. Finn attacks him, causing Magic Man to change his mind and take Finn back, back to his house. Magic Man shows Finn around the trash of his house in order to find a way to reach Jake. Through Though he tells Finn he will be unable to use it, Finn finds a picture of Magic Man with a woman and tosses it aside. Magic Man then takes Finn downstairs to find the Martian transporter. Despite Magic Man's claims of the transporter's inoperable state, Finn takes t- thinks of Jake and is then tra- tra- teleported to Mars, just outside the, the Martian city. Finn attempts to get into the dorm, dome where Jake and Miss mistaken for Magic Man, is being accused of Magic Man's crimes against Mars. The King of Mars, Abraham Lincoln, gives him two choices of of death, one by annihilation and the other by sending beings turned into space dust. It is interrupted by Finn, who attacks Grob. Finn's attacks cause Grob to drop his wand on top of Jake's on top of Jake killing him, Finn is shocked by what happened and declares, criticizes Lincoln for listening to Jake, for, for not listening to Jake. Lincoln feels guilty, as so he confronts Deft and offers him a dirty penny for Jake's soul, but, but Deft chuckles and re- rejects the penny. Lincoln is forced to sacrifice his immortality to save Jake. After Jake is res- resurrected, Finn asks if they should go get Magic Man. Grob tells him not to do so. So as he has, he had lost a friend and can't lose his brother. Finn and Jake teleport back to Earth and attack Magic Man. Finn then notices Tiny man- Manicore in the bottle, calling him a coward. As Finn breaks the bottle and gets the Manicore free, the Manicore frees, flies off and scoffs Finn's help, but begins to wholehearted monologue once he is farther away I am the true coward hiding from sincere expressions like a vampire in the nude who hides from the light thank you brave hero I was free from your your bo- from the bottle uh, bottle of jail but my new prison is shame my new prison is shame my his shouting causes Finn to ask what's what's he saying to which Jake replies he, sh- he said his new prison is shame Episode 16, Burning Low. The episode starts with Finn finishing building FP's house, which she loves. A small fire spreads to Finn's feet, which he, he says does not hurt as much as it used to. Then the fire accidentally spreads to the rest of his leg and Finn screams, then runs into a, a panic towards a nearby lake. FP then, and Jake then rush to the side of the cliff and look at the water to see if Finn is okay. All right. I'm going to do some tricks that F- FP and Jake think are funny. Finn pulls him back up to, I mean, Jake pulls him back up to, to on land. FP thanks Finn for building her new home. Finn and FP decide to hug, but they, they're interrupted by Jake, who knows that Finn would be burned by her. So dra- <clears throat> Jake wraps, him, wraps Finn in tinfoil. And when he is finished, Finn and FP hug and Jake smiles oddly. They let go after a while and and then Finn and Jake walk away into the forest saying goodbye to her. Jake thinks Finn's date with FP was pretty went pretty well, but Finn does not know if, if the hug was okay and asks Jake for tips. Jake's advice is, is to let things take their natural path and he explains some junk about dating. He creates 15 tier, which are a set of stairs made to, on his arm with stretchy powers. 
and then explain that Finn is at tier one, which is hugging. He pretty soon you'll be at tier two, which is smooching. Jake then explains about tier five and eight using references that would only apply only to Lady Rainicorn, such as touching her horn for the very first time. Also saying that it was very special. When they reach tier 5, Jake says it is discovering all 15 inches of her long, beautiful stomach. When Finn points out, I mean, when Finn points out tier 15, Jake tells him to stay away from that. that. Do not do tier 15. He then tells Finn that he needs a shower because he smells. The two enter the tree fort to see FFP broke in to collect tax. I mean, I mean, PB broke in to collect taxes. Finn then tells PB, don't inhale. While he goes up. Oh, wait, wait. I mean, Finn, Finn says. Finn tells PB, don't inhale while he goes up a ladder to take a shower. Jake then reveals in an outburst to PB that he is hanging out with FP. PB is distraught about this, quickly runs out off and fl- flies away on the morrow. Forgetting the taxes, Jake is confused, but is interrupted by a video chat with President Porpoise on Bemo's monitor. Next to see we see PB kick open the door to her to her room and run into to flop on the bed. Then she pulls out her diary and writes Finn plus love plus prin- flame princess. She disappears. She whispers to herself in a worried tone. Oh glob, I thought I'd ha- be ready for this. Next day as Finn is ready going to leave to hang out with FP, he is stopped with PB is standing in the doorway, causing Finn to shriek in surprise. She then attempts to explain to the duo why Finn can't see FP. But in the process, Finn leaves and Jake falls asleep and starts to dream that he is he is a president. Princess, I mean PB, wakes up Jake, requesting he tell Finn why he can't be with FP. But he he he's not he was not listening to PB and then thinks that she is she is really jealous of Finn and, and FP. Later, Finn returns with from his his date with FP and walks wakes walks up to Jake who was playing video games. Finn tells Jake that his date was great, went great, and asks what PB was talking about, talking to him about. Jake says that she does. She does not want him to see FP anymore because he she is crazy jealous of FP. This makes Finn frown. Jake then asks if Finn got to tier 2. And he tells Jake that he got five hugs. But Jake says that does not count. And he still had not accomplished tier 2. Finn laughs and blushes and says, well, still on at tier 1. Jake then tells Finn that the best way to get to Tier 2 is with a sappy poem. Then we see the two in, in their room. And Jake suggests Finn writes about his spectrum in the poem. To which Finn replies, Ew. Finn thinks out loud about the, what to say. Saying things like, She's bright, she's beautiful, and winds up talking about his feelings about her. He says that she makes me feel confused, like something is filling up in my chest and I can't breathe. Is it because she's so dangerous? Glob, Jake, I can't stand it. But then Finn notices that Jake is asleep again. The sun rises as Finn looks at Jake sleeping, and Finn, and, and Finn later goes to her at sunrise, trying to... Gain inspiration for the poem, which succeeds when the sun comes up. Finn whispers inspiration and starts writing. Then PB shows up and says, Finn, 
And Finn again shrieks in surprise. PB asks if, if Jake explained why he can't see FP anymore. Finn gets a bit annoyed by her and tells her that he understands. PB then says, Finn, sometimes you want someone and you want to kiss them and be with them, but you can't because the responsibility demands sacrifice. Finn blush, blushing yells, what are you trying to say? PB says, tells him, I'm trying to say that you're, you're, you're a hero, Finn. You're my hero. So I'm glad that you understand why you can't be with Flame Princess. Finn clearly Curry in rage stands up and says, you know, Bubblegum, I can't do this anymore. PB simply replies, What? Finn, Finn, very upset, replies, Now you like me? PB asks what he's, he, he is talking about. And Finn finally bursts out that he was in love with her, but she did not love him back. He, he assumes that PB is trying to, to get him to fall in love with her with her again. To which which he claims that he is ready to move on. I think she is going to build him up all over again. Finn tells her that he is done and leaves. A quarter confused PB picks up one of the scraps of paper and write, wrote Finn wrote on the and opens it and whispers Quietly, oh no. Then we see Jake flying, I mean, frying bacon and singing bacon pancakes. When PB appears again and asks Jake if Finn is, is with Flame Princess, Jake says to, to back off that, that that's his man biz. When she continues to pry at the subject and wave the crumble poem swept in his face, Jake res- Relates by yelling at her. Jake then says in in his outburst, "You heartless monster! Do you have any idea how much he's cried over you? Finn des- deserves to be happy, even if it, even if it, even if his whooping face gets burnt up, burnt off. You should be ashamed." Now he throws a box of pancakes mix at her, and screams, "You're sick!" PB. <laughs> Screams in t- in turn. That isn't about how some petty love triangle and 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 that flame princess Irma- elemental matrix can't handle extreme romance. If Finn kisses her, F F F P will burn through the Earth's crust to the core and will be thrown around by gravity, destroying the planet from the inside. PB then says that's why she had the Flame King lock her up inside the, the lantern to, obta- to to contain her. PB Bubblegum asks a dumbfounded Jake if he'll take her take her to them. Jake wordlessly turns off the stove he was frying a bacon on, grabs Bubblegum with his hands, puts her on his Stretched head and smashes through the tree fort wall, sprints towards F- FP's house. The two rush over to F- FP's new home, where Finn is realizing his poem to Fl- Flame Princess, but midway through it, gets burned to ashes. Finn and Finn and Flame F- FP laugh and they move closer together. And PB gasp, "No." But they're too late. Finn and Flame kiss, causing FP to burn and very bright explode and start burning a hole through the Earth's crust. Finn, who appears to have been injured due to the kiss because his lips are and parts of his face are burned, groans and growls over the hole, only to grab one of Jake's arms, ties it around him, and jumps into the hole after FP. Jake struggles with the weight and falls to the hole, sealing it. Finn lands on the cord next to next to Flame Princess, and explains her name. Ex- 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 exclaims her name. Jake struggles to get up, saying, "It's it's hot," but 
PB stops him. She says that if Jake does the the prize FP of oxygen for 24.8 seconds, she will go out, causing the reaction process to cease. Jake gasps, what about Finn? Finn reaches for FP and sees that she is paused, passed out, and turned a very light shade of blue. Finn struggles to breathe, says that he needs her to be okay. He he applies artificial reparation, which revives and stabilizes her, though it causes Finn to pass out from the lack of oxygen. Jake pulls the two up. Finn, who appears to be even more burned after sliding on on flaming body, awakens, causing coughing and asks FP if she is okay. To him, she replies, she is okay. FP crawls out, of the, out from under Jake and looks at the two. I mean, Prince PB crawls out from under Jake and looks at the two and says, she is stabilized. We're safe. For now, Finn then kisses a rock and holds it out for FP, who who also kisses the rock. It's, it makes a little bit, it smokes a little bit to symbolize them kissing. And the two walk off, and as the, this happens, PB sighs sadly, and says, Oh, Finn. A coughing noise causes her to turn around and see Jake staring at her with a grinch smile and she asks she asks what jake replies jealous with a rather sadly look and tone then she ends the episode by saying shut up episode 17 bemo noir finn asks jake where his sock is but jake denies taking it they get into an argument when finn asks jake to help him look for it at this point, the co- the colors change to black and white, like an old movie. Bimo decides to find Finn's missing sock. Jake Jake convinces Finn to go out with the only sock with only only one sock, and Bimo snaps a picture of Finn's foot as he leaves. Bimo notices Ronnie in the picture and grabs him for questioning. Bimo spots lipstick on the back of Ronnie's neck and asks him about Moran. Ronnie warns Bimo to stay out from stay away from her. Oh, this is all little information. So all these characters, they're just word animals. I'm I'm pretty sure that Bimo is making everything up as he goes on because he does the voices for each character. All right, continue to the. Recap. Ronnie warns Bimo to stay away from her, but Bimo assures him that they are dinosaur bones. Ronnie then denies. Ronnie then decides denies taking the sock, but points out a, a stain on Finn's other sock in the photo, saying that it looks like a grape stew stain. Bimo goes into the pantry to check out the grape juice but it is it finds it is unopened and realizes Ronnie was lying. Suddenly someone traps Bimo by shutting the door. When the door opens, Officer Davis is standing there waiting for Bimo. He tells Bimo to stay out of police business and threatens to put Bimo behind bars. Bimo ignores Officer Davis advice and threat and threat heads over to Ryan's ho- hoping that she can load, I mean, lead Bimo to Ronnie. Bimo asks Warren where the sock is, but she denies knowing anything about it. When Bimo suggests that Ronnie took it, she laughs at the idea, saying "If that if Ronnie were man enough to take, take, take a sock, she would be spending her n- nights with Beb. Bimo asks if, if she was saying Beb. Is a man enough, but she denies it. Says that Beb Beb does 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 not know anything about Finn sock. Mira catches Ryan mentioning that the sock is Finn's and points out that she should not know any details of the case. Ryan confesses that Beb was the only the one who stole the sock. As Bimo is leaving, Ryan asks Bimo not to tell Ron Ronnie. 
about her and Bib, but Ronnie is hiding near the rafters. Bebo leads, leads to Bib's a dance club downtown. Emo always starts stepping on Bib and growing him about the socks location. Bib denies knowing anything about the sock about socks. So Bimo grabs some sweat from a furnace and smears it on Bibs. Bib telling him that Ron sold him out. Bib denies it and tells Bimo that it was Ronnie who took the sock. Bimo goes to to wash the soot off his off his, off its hands. But when Bimo gets back to Bib to clean clean them up, it finds that he is dead and the police are arriving. Bimo runs from the cops, but but trips over to one of them and falls down the tree fort ladder, hitting his head while unconscious. Bimo has a strange dream. His last vision which consists of POV, personal point of view, sequence of Bimo performing the actions of the characters in the play. Bimo wakes up to find Neptor next to it. Bimo Asked Neptor if if it, if he had seen any cops down there. Neptor tells Bimo that only they and Ronnie had been down there all day, and that about a sock or a sock's worth of treasure was missing from from that room. Bimo realizes that Ronnie took the sock to carry the loot treasure, killed Bib so he would not tell any anyone, and pinned it on Bimo. Bimo goes back upstairs to look for Ronnie. Who finds a chalk outline of Ronnie, Ronnie with a ketchup stain in in it in it instead. Officer Davis tells Bimo that it is off the hook since they know Ronnie killed Bib and took the treasure. Officer Davis hands Bimo the confession Ronnie left and tells Bimo to let the case go. Bimo then notices that the the note was written with lipstick and runs outside. Ron is sitting on, on top of a barrel with treasure, floating on in a pond. Ronnie confesses to f- framing Ronnie, and Beb, and then reveals that the sock is is, is in her, and Bimo's secret grow, grown up kissing spot. To which Bimo re- re- reacts with a giggle. Ron bids farewell, floats to the opposite side of the pond, and jumps on, onto land. The car changes back to normal as Finn and Jake return to to the tree fort with the sea wa- sea wa- 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 ward. Bimo shows Finn that his sock was in his pillow the whole time. Finn is happy that his sock is found and and he and Bimo repeat, repeatedly say, "Yay, Bimo!" After a short while, Jake asks, "Our our chicken's name is." Moran, Bimo says yes, and mentions that she is red hot like pizza supper, and blushes as the episode ends. Episode eighteen, King Warm. The episode starts with Finn waking up to PB calling him her king, and and husband. Noticeably, the ears of Finn's hat are longer than usual. Finn realizes he is on. The candy throne wearing a crown and is being watched by a group of banana guards who can't chant. Long live the king. His crown floats to the ceiling. And when he looks at the group of banana guards, again, they are upside down except for their faces. He looks at PB's shoulder and sees the king, sees the king warm. Finn thinks he recognizes the worm who jumped out of a window. PB face, PB's face appears on the back of her head, and she whispers to Pe- Peppermint Butler. He doesn't know he's dreaming. Finn is confused, and the scene changes. Finn is sitting in a forest with FP, who calls him honey and tells him to eat his soup. Finn does not respond to to FP. Angrily tells him to eat eat it now. He eats some of it and closes his eyes, and the room morphs into a room. Like one in the tree fort. FP. Eyes turn into mouths. And a brief moment. For a brief moment. And she 
soon changes her into peppermint butler. Holding the king warm, peppermint butler then grows a second head. Explains that Finn is trapped in a dream. His face then becomes blurry and his hand turns into a warm white creature. Who explains to Finn that he needs to find the worm and break it. Finn points out that Peppermint Butler is holding the worm, but it turns into a spoon. Phil pops up behind Peppermint Butler from the with his small pants, and Peppermint Butler throws a spoon at Finn. Finn notices Jake in another room through the window, but the room appears to be upside down. And Jake is wrapping a gift with Lady Rainicorn, who has two mouths and is speaking English in a very deep voice. One of her mouths spits out tape that she uses to, for the gift. Lady then tells Jake to, to play his viola, and he does. A music note comes out, then turns into the worm. Finn sees the worm escaping through a small hole in the wall and jumps in the room after it. He and Jake start to talk, and they realize that they are in a linked dream with one another. Jake states that he does not think Lady is real, and they decide to follow the worm through the hole, which in a problem, which which is a problem because the hole is too small. Jake explains that because it is a dream, Finn can do whatever he wants. He then emerges a sword capable of blasting a hole. Hole for not dreaming. For, oh, he's blasting a hole in the wall. And is happy with himself that for not dr- dreaming of weird stuff. Sword then turns into a shark, and Finn freaks out. Jake tells tells him that he needs to be careful because if if he fills the world with his subconscious fears, it will fall apart. Jake tells him to just shrink down, and the two then then the two of them go through the worm's hole. They wind up in a field of I- a field with Ice King running towards them. Ice King tells them Fiona and Cake and tells them that he has really made a mistake. Finn and Jake are confused until two monsters made up of a bunch of penguins show up. Finn and Jake run away until they find their dad, Joshua, who is not responding to anything they say. Joshua st- starts knitting and eventually he, knit, he his knitting turns into King Worm. King Worm then bolts to a nearby mountain. Finn, and Finn imagines that he and Jake have gigantic legs. Jake complains that it is boring for him as it is, it is his normal power. So Finn imagines that he has a bird instead of legs. As they chase after King Worm... It starts raining lump, Alice, lumpy space princesses. When they reach the top, they find a frozen king worm. They grab a nearby rock and, and appeared from that, that appeared from nowhere, break the worm, and the dream fades away. Finn and Jake wake up in their room and start asking one another if they're okay. And they celebrate that they did it. Notably, the ears on Finn's hat still longer than usual. Finn then notices a mirror waving in the background, and upon a closer obsession, realizes his reaction is, is is different, looks completely different, with a robotic hand. I think it was a robotic hand. He says that he, he's probably sure that it was not normal. Jake then tells him that it is fine, but when he turns, his nose is huge. Finn then points to a, to a, at a full mug that's falling, the floor breaking, and then reversing back to its normal state repeatedly. Finn realizes that Jake pinched him earlier, but he never pinched Jake back. He starts trying to pinch him, but Jake backs off, telling him that everything is fine. When Finn finally catches and pinches Jake, his skin melts off, and Jake ro- Finn realizes for sure that he is still dreaming. King Worm then ra- rises from the melted Jake and says that Finn can't defeat him. He proclaims that he, he, he will keep Finn in, 
in the dreamscape until he has consumed all his, of his life energy. Enraged, Finn yells that he used he uses that and states starts the attack, but he he runs something is missing and gets depressed. He sadly starts states that he will be stuck in dreams of forever, revealing significant fear. The ceiling cracks and a chunk of wall chunk walls of the ice king of I mean King Worm's head. He tells Finn to knock it off, which causes Finn to remember what Jake said about fears and breaking down dreamscapes. Finn concentrates on his deepest fears and and seawater begins to pour from his navel and fill up the room. The witch then crawls out of his belly button and Finn break freaks out. The clearly demerging worm tells him to calm down, to which he replies, Never. PB comes out of his stomach next. Finn starts to feel relieved until she tells him to quiet down because he is ha- she is having one coffee with the witch that he would not understand because he is too young. This freaks him out even more and causes more damage to the worm. He then goes into a crib and remembers Ghost Lady and continues to be horrified as the worm... worm the, as the worm... Did, did sh- Deteriorates to near nothing. He asks the king worm to stop one final time. But the worm claims he does not know what Finn is talking about. Finn st- strains at, and a clown pops out of the of his navel. The dream breaks as the worm is shriveling up and and up even more so. When Finn is is what Finn is with Jake in his living room with the shriveled king worm. And his minions, the, the, the minions suddenly explode. Finn then orders the worm to get out of his house in a manly way, voice. And the the worm meekly complies. Finn pinches Jake to be sure he is awake. Jake crosses his arms and walks away saying, come on. Finn replies that he just did it to check. And the episode ends. Episode 22, Ignition Point. The episode begins... With Finn and Jake and at FP's house, Jake asks if, if FP is ready for is ready, and she responds yes. So Jake farts in a bag while FP shoots it down with a flame disc. Finn Finn finds it awesome, and he excitedly says it in his and it is his turn. So he burps in a bag, and then flame, FP shoots it down. By shooting flames out of her fingertips. FP laughs at this and says to them that they are full of magic air. In a funny way, Jake farts, which makes Finn say gross, and slaps him. Finn, sa- Finn looks at FP, who seems distracted, and asks what is wrong with her. She responds with that their magic tricks make her feel sad because she has left her... Scented candles at fire the fire palace. Jake says that she should go back to the fire kingdom to grab them, but FP is still ang- angry at her father for walking her her in the lantern for so long. Finn says that they could go get the car- candles, which FP agrees to, but tells them to avoid being seen seeing her dad as she does not want her father thinking that she needs anything from from him out of nowhere finn and jake hear a farting noise when they look behind them they notice a rock is moving with flambeau underneath it it they are both surprised and jake whispers to finn that he thought he thought fp was the one who was farting Finn asks Flambeau to cast Flame Shield on them, which he does. As they enter the, the Fire Kingdom, they go up and up into a window, which leads to FP's bedroom, and and see and smell stack of candles on a nightstand like rock. Jake says they smell like an old lady's bathroom, which Finn finds offensive but jake says 
They remind him of his grandmother, who is who he loves. As they start collecting the candles, they hear a voice outside the door, which Finn listens to and looks under the the cr- crack of the, of the door. Finn realizes that the two people are plotting to kill Flame King, FP's dad, and he learns that one of them has a voice that hisses. He loops the S in his talking, and the other has a untitled shoelace. He warns they plan to ki- on killing him with ice, which would be more painful than water. As Finn and Jake walk out of the room down a hallway to find the two, to find the two conspirators. Three flame people come, come so they disguise themselves as a f- photo hanging on a wall. As flame, the flame people play play around with Finn in p- painting the form. He st- starts to run out of oxygen, and the three flame people run off to go to the to, to snack time, which makes Finn happy. They hear one of the. The speeder tours down the hall and follow in which leads them to an air vent which they climb in, uh, into. With Jake's hearing, they walk around in the air ducts and Jake falls down a hole, which leads to another part of the air of a duct. When Finn falls down, he lands on, on his face and asks Jake why did he did not catch him. And Jake responds to it with... To tell him next time. To tell him next time. As they continue along, they hear the hissing voice, which they follow it into the kitchen where, where a chef is preparing food. They land in they land in a in a vat of blueberries. And they and the and they and the chef confuses Them for blue, blueberries due to their flame shield spell turning them blue. His hissing voice turns out to be a, a snake on Finn's shoulder. And the, and the chef says that he is going to chop them up because he thinks he still thinks things are blueberries. Finn and Jake run away where they meet a crowd of actors and pull two of the actors away with Finn whispering. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They disguise themselves in the actor's costumes. In the, in, in the actor's costume. And after a warning, they are in the play in front of, of, king, of, the, of the king. And everyone in the flame kingdom, they devise a plan to, in which they would pretend to be conspirators. And Finn would have an untitled shoeways. And Jake would, would say, S, whoever he, S, whoever he spoke. As the zero carries on throughout the play, they notice a guy looking suspicious and continue to do it. But soon, Flame King catches them and orders them to be executed. They learn that the executors are the real conspirators and yell, yelled out, Naked babies, naked babies, naked babies! To get the crowd's attention, which he then reveals the executors to be conspirators. Flame King amassed them to reveal Torcho and F- Phoenius. His brothers, children, whom he thought were extinguished, he orders them to be punished to the punishment room. Finn and, Finn and Jake learn that Flame King had killed his brother in order to take the throne. Finn then asks if FP is evil, to which Flame King replies yes. However, Finn then asks if she if if she ha- hanged out with someone good, then could she be should, could she be good? And Flame King asks. And Finn again replies yes. And Finn and Jake go out, get out of the fire palace. Flame King has a concerned look on his face, on his, and says to himself, "Good." Finn and Jake arrive at Flame FP's house, who is now asleep. Finn sighs adorably, and Jake lights up his candles using her hair. They then leave, but Flame King's face erupts from the candles, fire, and whispers multiple times, 
into the FP's princess ear. Evil, 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 evil. Before disappearing in Juzu, FP's waking up with a surprised and scared look on her face. Episode 23, The Hard and Easy. The episode begins with Finn and Jake sitting by a body of water in the rain. Finn is not wearing his hat or his shirt. They both decide to leave. A river scamp calls out to them, asking for help. He explains to them that the Magi Frog was harass- har- was harassing them. He tells Finn and Jake to follow him to his village, where when they arrive, the leader of the river scamps Ask them for help. They agree, and, and the leader offers them a bag of lollies, lollipops. As a reward, they walk through the swamp and decide to use the lollipops as a way to remember where they, they came from. No children run out of lollipops, and they start running in circles. Finn notices that they pass a tree that looks like a butt many times and knows that they are lost. Jake says he will stretch over the trees to see where they are, he comments, comments on how misty it is, then is hit by a lightning. He stops, it stops raining, and Finn and Jake try to start start fire by rubbing twi- and twisting sticks in various ways, and even writing fire on the ground, all without success. Then Jake accidentally sc- screws a stick into his pace, screaming in pain. He then stretches over the tree again and, and is once again electrocuted, lightning, lightning, lightning is stuck on fire. Finn then asks, then asks Jake how he did it, but Jake thinks that Finn did it somehow. Suddenly, Finn hears something and says, It is the Magi, Magi, Magi Frog. He puts the fire out so it will not see, see them. Finn and Jake head toward the the sounds of what they think is a magi frog. Jake appear, approaches from one side and Finn on the other side. Jake uses the sign language to send plans to Finn, who does not understand. Jake heads out to attack and follows Finn. I mean, Finn, Finn follows. And Jake to attach, attacks branches begin to fall on both of them. They realize it is not the ma- Magi frog, but a very large nest. Th- the frog begins to appear behind Finn and Jake. Pan- appears behind and Finn and Jake panic. As Finn realizes it is the, the frog, Jake stretches them out of there and begins raining again. Finn and Jake hide in a cave from the, from the frog, can't fit in. The frog is able to fit his head through and it rolls his eyes back to some somehow fit the rest of his body into the cave. Jake stretches out out to the, about the the frog's size and attacks him until the frog the frog has him. Jake screams that he is getting general generally getting eating him. Finn thinks of all the of evidence given by the river swamp scamp. And Jake along the way, Finn rose that he to get the frog to stop he needs he has to kiss him. Finn kisses the frog and the frog begins to transform into a, an actual humanoid prince. Prince thinks Finn and Jake and says he is confused as to why he was not turned to normal pe- before before this, as he has already kissed just about everything he could get his lips on. Finn then explains that the curse could only be lifted if someone else kissed him. He thanks Finn and, and flies away, landing heartily. Episode 24, Reign of Gunthers. Ice King is in his room looking for his demonic witching eye. I mean, demonic wishing eye. Gunther comes in and, and Ice King follows it to a haired brush. Like she says, the brush is for princesses only, and it, it is shown that he, it is a dirty piece of... It has a dirty piece of PB's hair stuck to it, which Ice King smells. It, it, he describes to... He decides to look for a magic wishing eye online, but Gun- Gunther annoys Ice King. He decides and leads and leaves to go to Wizard City to get a new wishing eye. 
ordering Gunther to try not to break anything while he is gone. Gunther, in spite of Ice King, decides to break every bottle it can get hit, get their its hands on. It heads to Ice King's recliner where it is revealed that Gunther keeps its kitten offspring and Ice King's demonic wishing eye. Later, Finn wakes up to find Gunther on him and it zooms out to show the room filled with Gunther's. Finn tries to make them go away, but they just mimic Finn. Jake gets angry and grows bit groves, knocking down all the Gunther's, but they grow too and attack Jake. Finn starts fighting them, but they fall upstairs. I mean, they fall downstairs. The Gunther's pin down Finn and Jake and start swapping them. One kicks Jake and Finn screams, Ice King, as he gets slapped. The scene changes to Ice King flying to Wizard City. It, it is a hidden by a fake cliff. And when Ice King says Wizards Rule, the cliff, the fake cliff disappears inside the city. Ice King comes to, to a stop in front of a, of a store. He reads the sign above that apparently has the wizard symbol for mystical items. He asked Hunter's wizard just, just to be sure. And she replies, and Ice King complains that they should write it on the sign and protest, protest no more symbols, and no more initiations. Then Huntress Wizard asks if Ice King is trying to get himself killed in the leaves. At this, Ice King mentions JT Dog Zone and his advice on swinging, swinging at every ball, meaning to try to hit on every woman. I, Ice King goes inside the store, and inside is a halfway which leads to a room with a table of and Buffo. Forest Wizard and Laser Wizard are talking there. After their conversation, they can't. They chant something as Ice King walks up to them. Ice King asks to keep what tight. The three wizards get angry, and Wa- Wizard Wizard says it is a secret. Ice King never should. Ha- Ice King should never have heard. The three wizards walk up to him and attack him. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Jake gets flattened by the Gunthers, and the real Gunther comes up with the kittens taped to its back and is wearing Ice King's demonic wishing eye and breaks breaks two bottles. Finn asks where Ice King is, but Gunther just leaves, and the fake Gunthers follow Gunther. Finn and Jake walk out of their of their house to find fake Gunther scattered all over the grasslands. Finn wonders if the fake Gunthers are everywhere. Then Jake grabs a telescope. Jake scrawled by what he saw and gets kicked by Finn. He says, "It's over. We've been conquered." Jake says, "Everyone's been conquered by Gunther." Finn then looks to the toes of Mrs. Gunther and went leading her, her leading the army to the Candy Kingdom. Finn breaks the telescope and rides rides Jake to the Candy Kingdom, but Finn notices he is still in his pajamas and he, he has to change. Finn calls PB and she is mad by the fact that there is an army of fake Gunthers heading towards the Candy Kingdom. PB says that the Gunther has has to get past the b- banana guards and the gumball guardians. Jake says that it will n- work, not work, and Vince says he has a plan. And while he gets there, he will do his plan as as addition to P- PB's plan. And ends ends the call. Finn tells Jake that he will not reveal his plan to, to because he per- he prefers to be mysterious keeping all the ladies in state of confusion. That way he has an option in case FP doesn't work out. Finn says it is called Future Farming. He got the idea from Jake's book, Mind Games, by J- J- JT Dog Zone. Jake tells Finn that, that it will mess up his brain and that he only kept the book for laughs because it is full of bad advice. But then tells Finn he, he can be mysterious, confusing confusing him. Finn and Jake arrive, and Finn climbs on the wall, and PB tells him the cavalry is st- 
stand standing by fantasize to rally some citizens but then unicorn shaped fake gunters attack them then pb commands guards riding on candy horses to defend but they fail one gumball guardian tries to defend but is taken down by a giant gunther made of gunthers and many more gunthers are coming pb taunts gunther that it can't break the wall but it, it releases the cat and it shoots out lasers while being in an aurora made of of energy and destroys the wall gunther tries i mean flies to where the wall is and when the smoke clears up Finn shows that his plan was to collect all the bottles in the land, but as Gunther likes breaking bottles, the army follows and breaks more bottles. With glass flying everywhere, Finn pr promises that they will not run out of bottles, but as Finn finishes the sentence, there, there are no more bottles left. And it shows that the bottles have not have been reduced to a pile of broken glass. Gunther calls, it, calls its army to attack Finn. I mean, Gunther calls its army to attack Finn, Jake, and PB. Finn tries to attack Gunther, but Gunther uses the wishing eye to make his army split in, out, spit out swords and attack. PB says she has a third plan, which has to make bottles out of the broken glass forever. Gunther comes to in to tell the three that it will kill the Gumball Guardian if they do not give any it, any bottles. PB tells it to wait, but Gunther decides to kill the Gumball Guardian. As Gunther taps the glass, it makes it crack. It makes a crack. Ice King demands. Ice King damaged comes and sees Gunther with, with his wishing eye. Ice King then punishes Gunther by squirting water at, at it. Ice King commands it to remove the demonic wishing eye. As Gunther does, so... Its army disappears and it walks away. Finn asks why Ice King is all is jacked up, and he replies that he got into some crazy whiz biz at Wizard City, and does not know how he survived. He's about to tell him, but remembering it is a secret, only saying Wizards only fools, keep it tight. <laughs> Episode twenty five. I remember you. The Ice King per per performs cover of Marceline's fry song to Gunther and he gets the idea of to ask Marceline help Marceline's help to write a song to impress princesses ripping out some pages from his scrapbook so he can use them as inspiration for lyrics he flies to Marceline's house Finn and Jake notice him and think that he is up to no good Marceline is to help refuses to help him out at first but the ice king flies into the house and tangles himself of trying to set up his instruments. Finn and Jake arrive, assuming that Marceline has subdued him and offer to make him a oh offer to take him away. But Marceline tells them that they are writing a song together. Come accomplished by Marceline the Ice King sings a song addressed to PB and other various princes of Lou, feeling that it is he is he is so alone and needs pretty much anyone. He starts acting crazy, shooting ice bolts at the ceiling and becomes alpenzagnik for pushing Marceline when he stacks at him, tackles him. He flies into the kitchen and Marceline fin finds him hiding in the fridge. Despite calling the Ice King an annoying, pitiful old man, she admits that she, she is glad to see him. The Ice King is surprised to find out that she likes him. She likes him and asks for a hug, which Marceline gives him when he this, this interrupts her feelings and tries to kiss her. Marceline angrily confronts him and asks if he really does not remember his past or who he is, calling him by his real name, Simon. The Ice King proclaims he is a widowed artist taking out the pages of his scrapbook to prove it. Marceline shows him a newspaper clipping of, of a photo of himself before he was the Ice King, no, holding the holding the Enchiridion before the Mushroom War. She also finds a photo of him herself in the pile which he took. On the back, Marceline finds a message 
from Simon did directing directed at her, throwing his anguish at losing her, himself, as his magic crown transforms his mind, and his fear that Marceline will lose him as a friend as he continues to transform. The message also con- indicates that the crown's magic was helping him survive f- survive the mushroom war, and he knows he has to protect Marceline in his destroy in this destroyed world. But that he is torn between his need to protect her, her from the, its danger and from himself as he loses his mind. The Ice King has no memory of writing the note, but it tells her to read it in the form of a song Oh, he plays the drums. After Marceline sings a message on the back of the photo, he, she becomes frustrated that she does not recognize his own. He does not recognize his own words and shows him something that he wrote. He sings the message expressing regret and asking for mercy and forgiveness. As they sing, a flash flattered Finn and Jake watch from outside and with binoculars not knowing what's going on. A flash reveals a ruined city in the aftermath of the Mushroom War. A young Marceline standing alone in the wreckage crying crying a not yet fully transformed Simon finds her and wipes her tears cheering her up with a stuffed animal Hambo episode 26 the witch the episode begins with Finn having a nightmare about the cosmic owl screeching Billy kissing his lady and the bear and the snail reading the Inchiridion at one point while he is laughing Billy's image flickers to the witch and back again. Suddenly, the snail turns into the witch and attacks Billy. Then Finn wakes up. He tells Jake Jake about his dream. Jake says it is a prim emotion dream. He he then says that they should go tell Billy because he was in the dream. Before they leave, Jake explains his dream. He he then turns into a car and then drive then drives Finn to Billy's home. Once there, Billy tells yells at them for saying that it is three in the morning and asks why they are there. Jake says that they wanted to make sure he was not dead, which Billy asks why they would think that. And Finn proceeds to explain about his the dream. Then a surprising look appears on Billy's face and after Finn is done explaining his interesting dream, Billy asks them if they want to save all life from the witch. And they agree after they head out. Billy tells them that they need to collect all the mystical gems from all the princesses and, and Ice King's power power crystals that protect them from the witch. After some of the, some time spent collecting the crystals, the group stops to rest for a bit. And Jake asks Billy how many more crystals are they they, they need. Billy intimates that there is one left. Finn gets hungry and rampages through Billy's knapsack looking for a candy, finding the Inkyridine after being being smacked out of Billy's Billy out by Billy and asks why he had the it. Billy says that he found it in the mouth of a bear and Finn blushes with embarrassment as he, remem- he remembers giving it the book away to the bear. Billy says it, it has mis- magical powers and tells him to turn the sword on the cover of the book which Finn does. The circle on the front opens up showing nine slots where all the gems go in in mis- mis- mythically mystically except lumpy LSPs which just falls out of the book the, and shows a brief diagram about what would happen if all slots were filled. At first Jake and Finn wonder all wonder what all the holograms are, but Billy uses the blue crystal on his face to activate another hologram. A man named Boo Buko appears and explains that the set the first set of holograms represent which is all the known universes and dimensions and they how they are connected. Jake tells tries to play around with it but it f- frightened frightened him and he calls it calls it calls it off. Buko goes on to mention that in the center of the universe is the time room where Prisma dwells. Billy states that he is going to push the witch into into there, similar to 
to place the, the witch in a non-exi- non-existence. While Finn and Jake are agreeing with Billy's idea, Billy has another interesting look on his face. They then go to the candy kingdom to get PB's gem. She's experimenting with little creatures, cutting off their legs and repre- reattaching them. Finn breaks, breaks through the roof, ca- fa- failing, falling, failing at trying to do it. Do so quite quick, quickly. And after re- 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 regaining himself, asks for the crystal on her crown. PB is shocked and refuses, forcing Finn to grab it without explaining why, during which PB accidentally cuts Finn's cheek with the scissors she is still holding from the experiments. They stare at each other for a brief moment, both st- stunned, and PB says, That was an accident. Finn removes the gem from her crown, drops the crown, and is Grab, grabbed by Draco, stretches out the wind out of the room, from the hole. Finn made, Finn made when he fell fell in. Finn and Jake run away, with the gem with with, with PB not far behind, who has take taken the stairs. Once outside, he then puts the gem in the final slot. While it starts to flash out of the stone on the book, then the book starts to shake, while the pieces start to fall off as the encoding turns black or to some rock looking substance. After pieces of the cover slide off and or illuminate as Finn is running, Billy being behind the tree in the candy kingdom tells Finn to hurry with the encoding. Then PB runs out telling him that Billy is really the witch. Just as they say this, one of the gumball Guardians gets up and blasts Billy, detecting the witch's presence, thus revealing half of Billy's face Face and showing the witch's true face. The witch then asks for the book. Finn r- realizes that the witch messed Billy up, and, and after dodging a grasp from him, smashes the book off his knee. And then Finn is knocked out by the power of the Incarinian. Finn, not knowing what had happened, woke up seeing that his action actually opened up a wormhole. The witch laughs because he is pleased and thanks Finn. Tauntingly, as the witch tries to pass through, Jake grabs him, reacting to PB's request, and stretches as to not to, to, go, to, not to go through. Jake, though, is slowly being dragged into the portal as the ground under him gives way. Finn tries to stop Jake from getting pulled in, but instead is pulled with him. Scene changes to how Finn looked like in his reflection scene in their dream in Worm King. Finn is playing his flute with Jake, who appears to be a regular, non-talking dog sitting outside a small house with a barn next to it. His mother calls him in for what she says is something important. The episode ends with Finn assu- assuming he has done something wrong, and he and Jake quickly run inside. The story continues in Season 5. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and consider supporting the channel below. Bye. For, n- for now, see you all again. I'll be taking a break from a recapping Adventure Time, but... More recaps are coming. Subscribe. Bye.